Hey everyone, my name is Ashton and I'm the other co-founder for iCanMed and in this video we are going to go through the scoring and marking system for the UCAT. Now the scoring and marking system is a bit different from high school and university. Uh, they don't give you like a raw percentage or they don't give you a grade like A, B, C, D or high distinctions. Okay, what they do instead is an entirely different system, which is why we need a dedicated video to go through exactly uh, what scores are given in the UCAT and what you should be aiming for as well. So what we have here are the scores for the first four sections for the UCAT. Now section five is assessed differently and I'll talk about that a bit later on. Okay, but we can see here that the total score for the first four subtests is between 1,200 to 3,600 and that each of the four sections are weighted exactly the same. Okay, so if you get given a raw score, UCAT takes that raw score for each section and they convert it to a scaled score from 300 to 900 for each of the four sections. So when you add it up, it adds up to a minimum of 1,200 and a maximum of 3,600. Okay, so just take note again, if you get 0% in the UCAT, you do not get a score of zero. Okay, it will get scaled to 1,200. And likewise, a 100% score uh, will be scaled to 3,600. And anything in between will fall in between that range of 1,200 to 3,600. Okay, now every year UCAT also releases a lot of data uh, with how the previous year's cohort performs in the UCAT. So here are some data that they release that you can see right here. Okay, so what you note is the scores on the right is the total score for 50th percentile. Okay, it's 2, 4, 8, 0. Okay, now your final score is always rounded to the nearest 10. So that's why your, the final score will always end off with a zero. And they also gave us the 90th percentile score, which is 2,840. Okay, so now this is the score that we tell people to aim for as a minimum guarantee to get an interview. Now it is competitive entry, so it won't always be that 90th percentile. It will definitely give you an interview, but it's just a good indicator of what you should minimally be aiming for. Okay, now some other data that UCAT gives us is the mean or the average score in each of the four sections. So as you can see here, verbal reasoning, the average is the worst. It gets a score of 571. Okay, and the best performing uh, section is quantitative reasoning, which gets a score of 663. Okay, so remember a score of 300 is 0% and a score of 900 is 100%. Okay, so by taking these numbers at the top here, we can gather the data and find out how much percent they are scoring out of 100. Okay, by taking 571, taking away 300 from that and then dividing it by 600 total marks because that's the range from 300 to 900. It is 600. Okay, so that's how we get these percentages. So for verbal reasoning, it's 45%, which corresponds to a score of 571. So that's the average raw mark, assuming that 300 is 0% and 900 is 100% and everything else is linearly in between. Okay, now multiplying that by the number of questions in that section, you can see the number of marks required to get 50th percentile in each of the four sections. Okay, now every question is worth one mark, except for decision-making. You can see here decision-making, uh, they have 29 questions, but the thing is, 10 of those questions are worth two marks. So that means you get a total possible uh, score of 39 marks. So that's why uh, here it doesn't say correct questions, but it says correct raw marks instead. Okay, so these are all the marks that you get in order uh, to hit this 
50th percentile. Now do remember it is a multiple choice test. So sometimes there's three answer options, sometimes there are five answer options. Okay, so people may still get questions correct just by purely guessing in the multiple choice test since you are not penalized for any incorrect guesses. Okay, now this is all the hard data that UCAT gives us. Of course, we're interested in getting that 90th percentile score as, as a minimum guarantee. Okay, so uh, what we did is we found the difference between 2,480 and 2,840. And you can see that difference there is here below. It is 360 point difference. Okay, if you take the percentages, it is exactly a 15% difference. So that means to get from 50th percentile to 90th percentile, you need 360 more scaled points. And what we did in this next part is we distributed the 360 points equally to each of the four sections. So you can see here, each of the four sections has 90 marks added on. So that when you add them four together, it is 360 extra marks. Okay, and these are the scores that if you score this for the UCAT, so 661 for verbal reasoning, uh, you will be pushed up into the 90th percentile. Okay, so when you add these together, it will be rounded off to 2840. So as you can see, you have to perform 15% better in each of the four sections. Okay, and then we've also translated that into the number of questions you need to get correct in each of the four sections. Now you can see it is not a huge difference. For verbal reasoning, it's only a 6.6 .6 question difference. To get that 15% extra marks to be in that 90th percentile. Okay, and you know, if you look at quantitative reasoning, it is only 5.4 extra questions. Okay, so just a little bit of difference. Okay, if you put in just that little bit more effort, and if you are just a little bit more knowledgeable than the other people and score on average 15% better than the average student, okay, you will be scoring in the 90th percentile and have a competitive mark. Okay, so this is how the scoring works for sections one to four. Okay, now let's take a look at situational judgment because it is a little bit different. Now with situational judgment, you also are given a score between 300 to 900. And actually last year in 2019, this was the first time UCAT has actually given a situational judgment score. Okay, before that, and even now in the UK, they don't give scores in the UK for situational judgments. They just put you into different bands. So it works a bit differently in Australia and New Zealand, uh, but do take note that situational judgment is used very differently in each of the universities for their, um, you know, for, for entrance into medicine. There are even quite a few unis that don't even look at your situational judgment score uh, when take, and they don't take it into account when they give you an interview offer. Okay, so uh, if you take a look here, it's the same as the other sections, a score between 300 to 900 and the average was 592. Now, situational judgment, you are also given partial marks. So it's not just a correct answer or a wrong answer. Okay, so if you are very close to the correct answer, uh, you will be given um, partial marking, which makes this section a bit harder to fail as well. Okay, now we do not have a lot of information in how universities use situational judgment and what scores you should be aiming for. Uh, but we do know that in, in the UK, it is used a lot uh, less stringently than compared with the first four sections. So in the first four sections, we're aiming for 90th percentile. And it's safe to say that in situational judgment, if you do score around the average, uh, you will be passing this subtest. And that's how the scoring works in the UCAT. 
Now you might be wondering when you would receive your UCAT score. It's actually really quick and almost immediately after you finish the UCAT exam. So after you finish the UCAT, you might have to wait maybe 10, 20 minutes. Then you'll get an email telling you that you can check what score you already received in that UCAT test. Okay, so it will be that score between 1,200 to 3,600 for the first four sections and also your score for situational judgment, which is between 300 to 900. Okay, now if you wanna check out your percentile, that takes a little bit more time. Uh, in fact, uh, you have to wait until after all the UCAT testing is done, maybe for a few weeks, one or two weeks after UCAT has finished. And then you go onto their website and you go into uh, the results area and then you can punch in the score that you received and UCAT will tell you what percentile you are based on the score that you entered into that calculator. Okay, now percentiles work very similarly to your ATARs. Okay, so if you get 90th percentile, it means that you are the top 10% of the people who sat the UCAT. And that is the minimum score that you should be aiming for to be competitive. Of course, we recommend that you prepare fully for the UCAT and score as highly as possible so that uh, you are more competitive. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed and know a lot more about the scoring and how it works in the UCAT right now. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, do please check out all our other videos and I'll see you all next time.